So you want to become an AI engineer, but are completely overwhelmed. What do you actually need to learn? How hard is it? And do you need to be good at math? Well, let's answer those questions. Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kirk, and today we're gonna go over what it takes to become an AI engineer. My background, I'm a software engineer. I've been doing AI work for maybe the last two years, and I'm gonna tell you what worked for me and what I think was gonna work for you. Because a lot of times you go online and you're gonna see a big list of all these Python libraries you need to learn. They're gonna tell you, hey, you need to be good at math, and you're gonna be completely overwhelmed. And I get it. As I said, an AI engineer is a software engineer. That's an important distinction. It's not gonna be easy, but if you take this path, it's not gonna be as hard as you think. My goal is to get you to create real programs, working with LMs and AI agents, deploy them, and solve real business cases. I work in Azure, but you can pick the cloud provider you want, and I work mostly with GPT. But again, we're gonna go over all that stuff, but the first thing we should do is figure out what an AI engineer actually is. What is an AI engineer? An AI engineer is a software engineer who designs, builds, and deploys applications that use artificial intelligence models, machine learning, and LLMs to solve real business problems, aka you are creating intelligent systems that perform tasks that typically require human intelligence. An AI engineer builds chatbots, recommendation systems, and agents. One important distinction we must make is an AI engineer is not a machine learning engineer. A machine learning engineer focuses on the models themselves. AKA, an AI engineer builds the full application while the ML engineer makes the models work. Let's look at the steps to becoming an AI engineer. First, the fundamentals. Learning Python. But don't be overwhelmed. You don't have to know everything. I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need to know. Next, LLM basics. We're gonna learn about different models. We're gonna look at prompt engineering. You're gonna to need to know what the difference between parameters and hyperparameters are. And then we're gonna look at using LLMs with regs. Next, agents. You'll wanna build agents. That's what everyone's looking for right now. And you're gonna to need to learn some frameworks We'll look at LangChang and LangGraph, and in the Microsoft ecosystem, learn about Microsoft Agent Framework. And last, multi-agent orchestration. You're gonna need to build multiple agents, have them talking to each other, using this, this knowledge to build real business use cases. First, the fundamentals. I'm gonna make some assumptions. I'm gonna assume you have strong foundations in computer science, data structures, and algorithms. Also, you know about version control, and specifically, Git. Now, you're gonna to have to learn Python. No question about it. I know that Microsoft Agent Framework, the new framework, is available in C-sharp, but if you wanna be taken seriously as an AI engineer, learn Python. But don't worry. Don't be overwhelmed. I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need. So let's talk about some of the fundamentals of Python that you need to know. You're gonna to need to know about the variables and types, and since you have a strong foundation in data structures and object-oriented programming, you're gonna to have to know about classes, inheritance, and composition. And you're gonna to have to know about functions, default arguments, variable positional arguments, and keyword arguments. And you have to know about lists, tuples, dictionaries, and sets, decorators, and also learn about virtual environments. 
you're going to probably do some stuff in Jupyter Notebooks, especially with using Hugging Face, which I'll get to in a second. But learn about virtual environments and also package managers. Know about PIP versus UV. I use UV a lot. In a lot of the projects I've been on, we use UV. Let's talk about some of the libraries that I use all the time. Pydantic is a data validation and parsing library using Python type hints. I use it all the time. You're probably going to use it a lot too, especially when we get into prompt engineering, another thing we're going to have to talk about. And I know you come from a background, hopefully you come from another language and you know about RESTful APIs. I'm always building my RESTful APIs in Python using Fast API. Just learn Fast API seems to be the most popular one right now, so just jump right into it. And I know we talked about the fact that AI engineers are different than ML engineers and data scientists. And Pandas is usually is a library that data scientists use a lot. Pandas is used for data manipulation for and for data scientists, but I use it a lot for reading CSV files and working with data frames and working with data, especially when you talk about testing. Which, of course, brings me to unit testing. And I use PyTest. You're going to have to learn about unit testing. Again, if you come from another background, another programming language, you probably know about unit testing. Just learn PyTest. You're going to be running those. You're going to be using tests. Next, LLM basics. OK, we just covered the fundamentals. While you're learning the fundamentals, learning Python, you can also start learning the basics of LLMs. And while you're learning about LLMs, aka learning about different models, how inference works, you should also start writing code. Sounds scary, right? Well, it isn't. Why? Well, Hugging Face is a great place to start. Hugging Face is a company and open source platform for AI, NLP, and multimodal models. Think of it as GitHub plus App Store for AI models. Let's take a look at it right now. Here we are on huggingface.co. Now here is where you can go and learn about NLPs, and LLMs, the very basics. This is what I did. I went to the LLM course first, and I stepped through this. And as I said, I didn't say you need to know about PyTorch or TensorFlow in Python libraries, because you're going to be exposed to that a bit, and you're going to be working with Jupyter Notebooks. But this is a great way to learn about transformers, tokenizers, and inference. Great foundations that you need to know. I went through this course, great course, all the fundamentals. I don't do a lot of this in my job, but you need to know this stuff. And then after that, I also did the, where is it here? I also did the agents course, which is going to get you exposed to different agent frameworks. Specifically, the one I use the most now is LangChain and LangGraph, and of course, in the Microsoft ecosystem, Microsoft Agent Framework, and using LLMs, which I'll talk about in a second as well. But this is a great way to learn about frameworks, what's available, Llama and Index, small agents, and building agentic reg use case. Have some fun, play with this, go through this course, get the fundamentals of what agent frameworks and what agents are. I should also state on the LLM course, you can also learn about fine-tuning models. Again, the fundamentals that you need, I don't do this in my day-to-day -day job, but you should know about how to fine-tune models, be exposed. Another thing you're going to learn with this LLM course is you're going to learn about models and NLP tasks, specifically summarization, classification, text generation, and you're going to be fine-tuning models. You're going to know the difference between what a pre-trained model is, a fine-tuned model is. Again, I don't do a lot of this. 
I know I have a tutorial on fine-tuning models. The foundations are you need to know, again, I'm going to always say that. But you're going to be exposed to that. You're also going to learn about hyperparameters and the difference between hyperparameters and parameters, parameters being the size of the model, like 1.5 billion, 10 billion. Again, this is stuff like you're going to learn about open source models. And then, of course, once you get in the open AI in the Microsoft world, you're going to know about what a GPT is, which is a proprietary model. If you go back to the home page and click on models, you're going to be exposed to different different models here, classifying by the task, by the size, and then looking at the model cards themselves, and not just LLMs, but multimodal models as well. Great place to get, read up about models, learning about different LLMs. Hugging Face is your friend. Play with this. Now we need to talk about prompt engineering. Prompt engineering is the practice of designing and refining inputs, aka prompts, you give an AI model so it produces more accurate, useful, and predictable outputs. A lot of my time as an AI engineer is just spent writing and editing prompts. I work with business analysts, with product managers, figure out the business use cases, write some POCs, and show them what we can do, and then I just fine tune the prompts. Yep, I'm just writing language, not code, but that's part of being an AI engineer. But this is really important. So get good at it and get used to it. And that brings us to our next topic. Next, agents and multi-agent orchestration. Okay, next, let's talk about agents and agent orchestration. First, LangChain. Okay, let's talk about LangChain. Now I know in my channel, I'm always talking about Microsoft and staying in the Microsoft ecosystem and introduce, introducing you to Microsoft Agent Framework. But for most of my projects, and to be an AI engineer, you should or you have to know LangChain, LangChain and LangGraph. And the best way to learn that is just go to langchain.com, which I'm at right now. And you see at the top here, learn, and you go to the LangChain Academy. And I went through all this. I did this a while ago, I think in 2024, so a year and a half ago from this recording. But this is a great resource. And I did the foundations, which you start building agents. And I also learned about Langsmith, which is about observability and seeing how these models and these agents work and how they reason. Great tools learn this stuff. Of course, if you're in the Microsoft ecosystem, they also have very similar tools for observability, which we'll talk about next. But just learn this stuff. Learn LangChain, learn LangGraph, master this. And this, as I said, is a great resource. Um, click on here. You can go through it. The only thing about this is you're going to be in Jupyter Notebooks a lot. And it, again, as an AI engineer, you want to get out of Jupyter Notebooks. You want to start building real applications, which we do using my tutorials, which we will get to next. And that brings me to YouTube and my channel. Yes, maybe I'm biased, but I think a great way to be an AI, to become an AI engineer, is to go through some of my content here. But where do you start? I have a couple playlists here. The best way to learn about the fundamentals of Azure and what and Azure AI Foundry, but now Microsoft Foundry, is to go through this playlist here. Let's just look at the playlist. I would go through here and step through all the videos. Maybe you've already done that. Of course, you've subscribed, you probably have. But learning about LM with rags at the start and learning about well, fine tuning, as I said, I don't really do my day to day job, but you're going to learn about agentic reg and everything else that this has to offer in terms of debugging your agents, 
guardrails, you're going to learn about how to evaluate different models, what models are available in Microsoft Foundry and building multimodal. And then, and then you're going to be using the GUI itself and learn about Microsoft Foundry and workflows. After that, you're going to want to know about the different frameworks available to building agents in Python. Now we have Microsoft Agent Framework, used to be Semantic Kernel and Autogen. I, again, have a playlist here for that. Let's look at the playlist itself. So we, I would just step through this. Again, maybe you already have, but you want to learn a framework. You want to learn Microsoft Agent Framework. OK, that covers it for what it takes to become an AI engineer. But as I said at the very start, an AI engineer is also a software engineer. So it's great to learn this stuff that I just talked about, but you also need to know how to be a great software engineer. Become a platform engineer. Learn the cloud. Pick your cloud provider of choice. For me, it's Azure, and really get good at it. Learn what rate limiters are, API gateways. And also, we are all people, right? We sometimes forget that. As I said, when I talked about prompt engineering, a lot of my day is spent working with product managers and business analysts, figuring out what we actually need to build and editing those prompts to create a real product something you can be really proud of. And I hope you follow these steps and take my advice. You'll really get something out of it. And if you did get something out of it, also remember to please subscribe and like this video. And until next time, I'll see you then.